What's going on guys, this is Kazi. So I recently did a video on things you must know uh, before buying a monitor. And uh, a lot of you asked me to give you guys my personal recommendations for different tiers. In this video, that's what you're gonna be learning. But here's the truth. Initially, I did plan to do a one long form video. So it was gonna start with like things you must know before buying a monitor and then jumping into giving you guys my recommendations. But that video ended up being over 45 minutes long. So then I decided to just chop it up and, you know, turn it into two different parts, if you will. So if you guys haven't seen the things you must know before buying a monitor, that video dropped a couple of weeks ago. So link is right up here. Click on it. Check it out before you watch this video. OK, that said, we recently did a survey. Majority of you, regardless of the skill set, are struggling with shot matching, skin tones, balancing and working with 8-bit footage. So I created a one hour long free training that covers all of that. Plus we'll wrap up the training with an extensive Q&A and you'll also get a link to download the practice footage, power grades and some of my personal LUTs. So don't forget to check out the training. It's absolutely free. Link is down below. So guys, do me a favor. If you are enjoying the content, then pause this video. Take a moment, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel for more awesomeness. Make sure you're following us on Instagram. Let's roll the intro. So let's pick our first option, which is going to be the LG OLED C1. This monitor right now with uh, all the holiday offerings, you can pick one up for $1,199. The second option on the list is going to be ISO CG279X. So CG short for color grading series, 279X is a 27 inch model and then the model is 9X. Uh, then the third option here that I'm gonna be talking about is by Flanders Scientific and the model number is DM241. It used to be DM240. They just updated it, but they haven't changed the price. So the price is $4,095. Now let's do a quick overview of each monitor. So let's go through it, all right? So here's our ISO. Now, the first thing that I have to say that absolutely baffles my mind and kind of infuriates me is this whole BS right here where it says contact ISO. Like, are you kidding me? We're in 2021 and you're gonna cause these frictions for me to buy your product? Do you not understand that we have so many options nowadays? ISO is not the only company. The reason why I get kind of fired up about this is that this is an ongoing thing in our industry. You know, this upper echelon, whatever that thing is, where they try to build this presence, like we're the Benz, we're the Porsche of this thing, right? Like you have to contact us. We don't wanna sell it to you. You have to work for it. Like, I don't understand. Like, if it's up to me, I got money that I need to spend somewhere, it's not going to ISO. I don't care. Like, if you're going to give me a runaround, I'm going to go buy something else. So it genuinely just, like, blows my mind that these are the cheap tactics that we're using in 2021, where even a five-year-old is just too smart, is like thinks like a freaking 27-year-old. So I don't know what world they're living in. It's pure garbage. I hope that somebody from their department, marketing department is watching this video. It's an epic fail. I give you a negative 100 out of 10 on this move. It's garbage. That said, now let's look at all the pros um, that go into when we talk about a prosumer level monitor. I wouldn't put ISO as like, especially this category that we're looking at as like a professional professional monitor but this is the ultimate jack of all trades. So I'm gonna put it right there in a prosumer category. So what makes it special? Let's quickly go over some of those things. One of the great things about this monitor, it comes with a built-in sensor. So it actually has a hardware calibrator built in that will pop in. It will basically learn like when you're using it, like your time or whatever. I don't know how it does it. It kind of magic. Like this is the ISO 27.9X. So that little flap, like that little hardware uh, calibrator just pops down like when I'm not using the monitor and it takes like about a minute to just calibrate it and then it, everything is good to go and it just makes sure that the color accuracy is there and it's consistent. And then it comes with this freeware software that you can download and uh, you know that's how it syncs with your actual uh, OS. And moving down, you know, you can do, there's tons of different presets. So you can actually throw a PQ curve, a uh, gamma curve, you know, and kind of see what your HDR content looks like. But then you have that wall, you have that threshold of 350 nits. 
So then in that case, it's not necessarily an HDR output, but it is kind of giving you a flavor. Like if you were to watch HDR content on SDR, what it would look like. So it does do that, gives, gives you that option, which is kind of cool. Color reproduction. So you can basically work on Adobe RGB, sRGB, Rec. 709, and DCI-P3 is only 98% accurate. Am I right? Let me, let me see. So we'll, we'll look at the specs as well, but I think it said somewhere 98% accuracy, which is not terrible. It's not the best, but you can get by uh, if you're working on a DCI-P3 project. It, right here, it says true black display. I mean, I don't really think so. It's an LCD display with a really low contrast ratio. So pure, it's not necessarily pure black. From this, a pure black would be this, which is the Apple XDR display. And then this monitor right here puts everything else to shame because like even the Apple XDR display, because it only has like 500 uh, local dimming zones, I feel like, or maybe less than that. And then you go to here, which I think is 2000 local dimming zones. So like it is crazy, crazy accurate. It's unreal. And then OLED is a whole different animal, right? Like it can literally just shut off the pixel um, that is pure black. And that's where the pure black comes from in the OLED technology. Another good advantage that you have when it comes to ISO is that you got 3D LUT, you know, so you can actually, you know, ingest your own LUTs in there. And then you have, uh, it's a 10 bit display. And here you can see the difference, right? Like if it's an eight bit display, you're actually gonna see banding. I mean, it's almost like the same thing shooting something in eight bit, right? Like you, you see this banding in the sky. Anytime there is a subtle gradation, you will see tons of banding there. And uh, it's no different when it comes to actually looking at the screen as well. If it's an eight bit screen, it's gonna have banding. If it's a 10 bit screen, it's gonna give you a very accurate representation of what you're looking at. And see, like just by looking at this example right here, I guess to tell you how important it is to invest money in a proper monitor, because you could be grading Alexa footage thinking that there is banding, but there's not necessarily banding on the screen just because your panel is cheap and it's an eight bit panel, it's giving you banding, but there's not banding on the actual camera sensor, right? How it was captured, right? Because it was a 12 bit image if you you know shot it in RAW or ProRes 444. So something to think about, all right? Another advantage of having a prosumer level monitor, it's gonna give you tons of these options, right? Like where you can have safe area marker on the actual monitor, you can turn it on. So you can have title safe and, you know, area safe and things like that. You can throw, um, you have, an option for different aspect ratios. So that's something that you cannot do on a consumer level product like an OLED TV. Adjust it at a factory for smooth color gradation. So that's an amazing one. Like when you get these monitors, uh, Flanders and ISO, they come with like the sheet like that you can look at, which is basically signed by the color scientist or calibrator and approved by them that, hey, this is kosher, this is ready to go. And here are the numbers. You know, these are the readings from your specific uh, display. So I love that. This is a very important one, guys. And also remember, don't ever turn on your monitor and start grading right away, okay? Monitors usually have a specific time until they warm up. So here they're telling you a stable color in just three minutes, so that's pretty quick. Even on a monitor like that, it's not instant. Like I've even heard that you gotta let it like sit for like 30 minutes before you start grading. So even when they're saying three minutes, they might be pushing the truth a little bit. I would still give it about 10 minutes before you start grading until everything is kind of stable. Uniformity across the screen, that is a huge, huge plus when it comes to high-end screens. And anytime you're talking about prosumer or professional monitors, that is one thing that you can almost always guarantee that it's gonna be uniform from edge to edge. And that's not the case when it comes to cheaper monitors. Like, you can buy a $2,000 monitor if it's an LCD panel and it's not supposed to be a high-end panel, it's going to be all over the place. You know what I'm talking about? Like a little white spot here and white spot there and it's, like, it's not uniform at all. And that's going to affect your final grade because you could be putting a vignette and then there's extra light bleed on the bottom left. And then you might think that, oh, I'm going to keep darkening it. You're darkening it, but that's not the reality. It's your actual panel that is like, you know, leaking that light in that area and you're overcompensating for it, if that makes any sense. So it's very important to understand that as well. So now let's look at specifications. 
And don't be intimidated by this section because this is what's giving you like hard facts, like hard data that you're looking for. So look at it, right? It's an IPS display, right? Technology, 27 inches. Uh, it is a, it's a QHD instead of HD. So you have more resolution. So it's good for, again, multi-purpose. And uh, then look at the display colors right there. Then you got your brightness, 350 nits, right? And uh, 13 to 1, 1300 to 1 contrast ratio. Yeah, it's okay. It's not the best. And, uh, you know, when I use this, it's okay. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. It's pretty good. It's it's positioned where it's supposed to be for the price point, okay? And um, then it tells you the color gamut. Remember we talked about how that's important? So it's telling you right here it covers Adobe RGB and DCI-P3. The only reason why it's not mentioning sRGB or Rec. 709 because pretty much it's assumed that it's going to cover that 100%. So you should be okay there. Video inputs. So you got the display port, so you're set. Like if I'm using this monitor, I'm almost always connected through display port because that's going to give me the 10-bit, right? It's going to kick in like 10-bit. If you're using HDMI, I'm not 100% positive, but it might not be 10-bit. So usually display port will give you the highest resolution unless you're using something like Flanders or this guy where you got SDI, which is going to be the best of the best. All right, so now let's move on to our LG C1. And first, we're going to look at uh, their overview, and then we're going to look at the specs. So I want to just show you this for a second to see the difference, like how they're marketed, right? So like when you look at this, light up your world, self-lit pixels have evolved. Like what does that even mean, right? Like, I mean, to us, you know, to, to nerds that are looking for actual hard data, looking at this is sort of like, what are you talking about? Um, obviously, you know, this is like all the marketing team, like people that don't even know about the technology, but they're just good with words. So like they just go beef it up, beef it up, like throw all that cool stuff uh, to just, you know, lure people in and um, for grandma to just go, oh, my God, what makes OLED unlike anything else? The answer is self-lit pixels. Great. Like, let's just buy it. I like this copy right here. OLED is unbeatable when it comes to picture quality. That's because OLED has millions of self-lit pixels capable of producing perfect black and accurate color. So I like that. I like that because it's true. The result is viewing experience like no other. I buy that too. So anyways, it's kind of a generic copy, whatever, right? Then you click on specs. And the thing that kind of surprised me is like how much BS was in the specs here as well. Like, I mean, wide viewing angle, thumbs up. Like, yes. What does that even mean? Perfect black. Yes, like these are not real objective things, okay? Like you can actually put in actual numbers that like back this up and it is true that it is pure black and it has all those things. Billion rich colors, yes. So whatever, it, it just, it's, it's a head scratcher. But the things that are good and that we would be looking for as professionals here in a panel like this is like OLED display, good. I need to see that. 4K, so it has UHD, good. I need to see that. 120 hertz of native refresh rate, that's great. Why? Because usually when you hook up your computer or your laptop to a big screen, there's a certain lag when you're moving your cursor. That is gone when you set your TV in game mode, all right? As soon as you set it in game mode, that thing is gone. The 120 hertz kick in and it's amazing. It's like the best experience um, you'll have, all right? interacting with the screen. So that's all good information that we need. Obviously, it supports Dolby Vision and HDR, so that's good. So now I want to go down to connectivity. And then under connectivity, once again, I'm looking at HDMI. It just tells me about HDMI ports. It does not tell me, is it HDCP 2.2? I'm, I'm expecting it to be. It may or may not be. Uh, but either way, when it says 4K 120 hertz, I'm assuming that it is HDCP at least 2.0 uh, or 2.1. Uh, if not 2.2. So we are okay there. But that's pretty much all the information that I'm going to need from here. And uh, again, this gets to tell you right there that, you know, it's a consumer level product. So just be aware of that. Like, I, I need you to build that IQ when you're looking at certain monitors. Now, next time when you're doing your own research, you can use this data and be like, oh, dude, all right. Like, I mean, if they're kind of hiding these numbers and making these big claims and it's all wordy, uh, maybe it's not the thing for me. Now, I'm not saying that this particular OLED that I'm showing you is not a good choice. I'm just saying if you're 
somebody is trying to sell you uh, this is going to be this is this is a specific grading monitor, and then you do your own research and you go, well, then show me the data, show me the numbers, and they're not doing that, then run away from that. That's all I'm trying to say. LG is not trying to make pretend. LG is like we make consumer products that are the best in the game, and their screens back it up. So. You know, that's a different story, but I just want to kind of give you that uh, background so you know what you're doing when you're doing your own research. Now, let's look at Flanders Scientific DM241. I mean, you know, you're looking at something professional because of this. Like, let's just go down a uh, look at this. It's like they don't even spend any effort or time on the website, which is totally fine because I don't care. They're giving me really solid data. They're starting it off with like features full 12 bit video processing. 10 bit LCD panel. They're not hiding anything from you, man. They're just giving you all the information that you need. Look at this, like the throughput. Bec through the SDI, you can plug in a 12 bit 444 connection straight into your panel. That's then going to project a 10 bit image. So that is absolutely incredible. Like all that information is right here. Now, what makes it so special when it comes to broadcast monitors is you got to think about it almost like on camera monitor that has waveform, uh, focus peaking and uh, histogram, RGB parade, all those options, um, aspect ratios, right? Like those lines. And you can have all of that cross here, all of that on your actual full blown monitor with color accuracy. And that's the beauty of these monitors. Like they're just so advanced in Flanders Scientific. You can upload up to 32 LUTs. So why is that helpful? Let's just say that you're editing something before you start grading. You don't want to mess with like the log image. You just want to leave it alone. On your output monitor right here, you can just go in and hit that one button and that's going to turn on log C to rec 709. Okay, so now you just did an Alexa log C to rec 709 conversion on your actual monitor, which is processing in real time and you didn't have to do anything in Resolve. OK, so that is incredible, especially when you're editing or your client is watching, uh, you know, anything on the client monitor. You can just turn that on ready to go. So now I want to jump into a pros and cons list for each panel that we looked at so you can make a more educated decision when it comes to purchasing one of these panels. So number one, let's start with our ISO. So for pros, it has to be built in calibrator. I absolutely love that thing. I mean, that was one of the reasons that sold me and I got this thing. And I think it does a wonderful job. I never have to worry about it. It does its thing and it is never intrusive. It just happens in the background. I absolutely love it. Preset library. There are so many presets. Like I said, you can throw a PQ curve, sRGB, Adobe RGB, Rec. 709. Everything is just readily available. Hit one button. You're there. So that is amazing. Multipurpose. So, you know, you can use it as your daily driver and then, you know, kick it up when you're grading something, you know, throw it on the screen and just get going. And you know that it's going to be color accurate and everything is going to be good. It's QHD instead of HD. So it's giving you that extra real estate. And especially when you're editing or, you know, Photoshop, whatever it is that you're doing, more real estate never hurts when it comes to resolution. Uh, decent color reproduction. The reason why I'm saying decent and not excellent is because we got a head honcho here, which is Flanders Scientific, which is near perfect color uh, reproduction. So that's why I'm saying um, decent color reproduction. It is really, really, really good. It's almost there, uh, but not as good as Flanders. OK, now let's look at the cons. Low contrast. The contrast ratio is not the best in the business. OK, especially when you put it next to an OLED, uh, big, big difference. And it matters. And you're going to find out why when we get to the OLED. Another con is uh, SDR. It is not an HDR monitor. It's restricted to SDR. So if uh, you are working on HDR content, it's going to be a problem, but it shouldn't be because we're not there yet. We still have time until we get there. So I never recommend anybody to like have that future proof mentality, because if that's the case, you'll you're going to be playing catch up your entire life. So don't worry about it. Uh, that's not a big deal for me. Another con is their dumbest purchase policy. I mean, you can go on B&H or Adorama and buy it from there, but it just it, it frustrates me. Uh, final con is going to be text rendering. I don't know what it is with that monitor. Uh, maybe it's sitting next to my Apple XDR, uh, which is exceptional at text rendering. 
This monitor, on the other hand, is just not that great at all. Like, I hate reading text on it. Like, I never read text on it. And once again, maybe I got these two next to each other. Uh, that might be the thing. Or maybe it is just exceptionally horrible when it comes to text rendering. So I do want to make that clear. Now let's move on to Flanders. It's starting with pros, color reproduction, best in the business. So good, better than this guy. When I got, that's one of the things about Sony's that are just extremely questionable. When I got the HX310, something felt off. So the first thing that I had to do is I had to hire a professional calibrator who came in, calibrated it, and I had to pay X amount even to get the calibration done on top of the $35,000 that I paid for this monitor to have it in a place where everything was perfect because Sony is notorious for running a little green, okay? They're white point. So for everything to be properly calibrated, I had to uh, go through that step. Whereas Flanders, it was perfection. I remember getting my Flanders. It came with a slip, again, that was signed um, by the actual calibrator or color scientist that like approved that particular panel that was shipped to me. And uh, I had absolutely zero complaints with that. All right. Uh, customer service is second to none. It's literally, it feels like it's your best friend on speed dial. You can, I, I genuinely feel like you can just text them and they'll, you know, hit you back up right away. There are no 10 different like automated liaisons that you have to go through to get to a live agent. You just call and they pick it up and they go, what's up? And they know you and you give them like four digits and they pull you up. And once you do that and build that rapport, it's game over. They just know you. They All of them know you. So with their panels, you get free calibration. I don't remember exactly if you have to pay for the shipping or not. I just can't recall now. Uh, but either way, it's a great deal. You just ship the panel. They calibrate it for you. Uh, they are super robust. They're built like a tank. Like they're incredible. You just feel it. Like you know where your money went, you know, it feels good. Um, and then maximum bandwidth, right? Like we talked about like getting the most throughput. So through SDI 12 G, which is a 12 gigabit connection, you know, you're just getting all the juice that your computer can throw at it or your, you know, IO box, your input output box can throw at your monitor. So you're getting that. Again, it just feels good to send a 12-bit 444 a data level set to full signal into your monitor and it can handle it. And then finally, it's a broadcast solution. So let's talk about like a little bit of like bragging rights, right? Like, I mean, some, a little bit of street cred, like, you know, now you're working with a monitor that is intended and is used at big production houses for broadcast level stuff. So that's what you have at home or in your office. So that's that feels good, you know, that you're working with a product that's quality and you can trust it. You can put your faith in it and you know uh, that even if you're not pixel peeping the scopes every single second, the results are gonna be accurate. So you can trust your screen, you can trust your equipment. So starting with the cons, uh, 1080p screen, it's okay. When, when it's downscaled from 4K to 1080p, it's not a big deal because that doesn't determine that your output is going to be now limited to 1080p at all when you export it. That's what I mean. On your screen, your output is gonna be downscaled to 1080p, but it does not matter. It's totally fine. I worked on tens of projects um, that were 4K and uh, I monitored it on a 1080p DM240 and then exported it in 4K, everything was fine. So. Not a big deal, but still something to keep in mind. It is SDR, even at 450 nits, it's not truly an HDR monitor. Another bottleneck just to kind of keep in the back of your head. And um, price. And the reason why price is an issue, it's not a lot of money for a broadcast grade monitor, but it is a lot of money where we are uh, when it comes to technology and how close we are to HDR and how accessible 4K screens are. I feel like if it was $400 or $700 cheaper, would have made it the ultimate bargain. But like right now, you kind of have to consider those things as well. And then the size. It is the smallest of the bunch, and it's kind of pushing it. Like I said, 24 inches um, when you're about three feet apart uh, from your screen. There are times when you kind of do that. Like I've done that, like where I would just kind of go like this and be like, all right, everything is looking good, moving on to the next shot. So... If it was 27 inches, would have been really, really good. All right, now let's move on to our OLED and uh, starting with the pros, HDR. 
So the capability to work in HDR or Dolby Vision is exceptional for the price point. It's unbelievable. Uh, 4K, so that's also a plus. And uh, especially when it comes to, you know, real estate and the size of the screen as well, you can truly use it as a multi-purpose, just Swiss Army knife right there. Like it's giving you HDR, SDR, 4K, huge screen, like all of that in one package with the perfect price point. So you're getting high refresh rate in game mode, which is exceptional uh, to experience. And then the price is just right. I mean, you cannot beat getting all of that um, for under $1,500. It's absolutely mind blowing. And then they introduce filmmaker mode in the C10 series. And uh, we're looking at C1, which is even uh, one generation newer than C10. But in C10, they introduce filmmaker mode, which after calibrating my screen professionally, matching it to filmmaker mode, it is 98% there. And that right there is probably the biggest marvel when it comes to technology, especially in the consumer grade monitor. Like it is incredible to be that close just by flipping a preset and going into a filmmaker mode and just going, I can trust that screen. I truly am set to right now, I believe I'm set in the filmmaker mode and I'm comfortable. I'm like, this is good, this looks accurate. So that is insane, all right? Now looking at the cons, the first one is going to be pretty big and I'm talking about ABL. So that is automatic brightness limiter. That is just something that all these screens have and uh, they try to sell it as a pro. It could be a pro when you're watching content, consuming, that is okay but it is a huge con when you're creating and mastering content on a screen like this because that just means that the brightness levels are gonna be shifting. The, the TV will be deciding for you how bright something should be on your screen, which completely defeats the purpose because as professionals, we want full control. If I tell my screen 400 nits, I don't want it to shift or go up and down or anything like that. If it gives me a certain contrast ratio, I expect it to have that contrast ratio constantly and for it to not shift. So there is a way to turn off this ABL. Uh, it's a process. It is in my masterclass in the studio section. I take you through it, the entire thing, and show you how to turn off ABL. I cannot share that on my YouTube because it won't be fair to anyone that have purchased my masterclass. But just wanted to throw that out there. This is not like a cheap shot at like, go get my class. I'm just saying that there is a solution, you know, available. The second con here is going to be the screen size. I feel like 48 is just on the cusp. It's just a bit too big, all right? My head will be moving all over the place to kind of just like keep everything in check, especially when you're grading. You're just kind of going like, you know, we're pixel peeping, right? Like when we're grading. Um, so 48 just gets out of the scope of our peripherals a little bit, uh, whereas LG just announced that for their 2022 lineup, they're going to be introducing a 42-inch OLED, which is going to be perfection. So if you are the type of person that can be patient and wait, then if you wait for a couple of months, maybe two, three months, they launch um, in March, I believe, or April. So they're going to be coming out with the new series, which is going to have a 42-inch instead of 48, but 48 is not bad at all. 48 is way better than a 55. This is a 55. So 48 is still much better uh, in terms of the size. 42 is gonna be really good. Um, and then another con is going to be that it's a consumer grade panel. So what do I mean by that? That just means anything that's mass produced is never ever going to rival the quality of something that is sort of like handmade. Um, I'm not saying like, Flanders Scientificate is handmade, but what I'm saying is like, it's going through a set of criteria to get that seal of approval that this is a Flanders Scientific product and it is ready to ship. Also, if your friend owns an LG C1 and if you own an LG C1, even if you set both TVs next to each other and at the same settings, I am 100% positive that one is gonna have a certain, you know, hue shift or a little tint. One is going to be a little green. The other one is going to be a little magenta. That is what I mean by a consumer grade versus like a professional grade monitor. All right. And now I'm going to make my personal recommendation to you. So if you can learn to turn off 
the ABL on the LG OLED, it's a steal. Like, look no further. For what you're getting for your money, it is, as I said earlier, the ultimate Swiss Army knife. It is doing everything, okay, and then some. If you're on a budget and you want a multi-purpose color accurate solution, then ISO is the way to go, okay? And if you're kind of killing the game when it comes to color grading and you're pretty serious about it and you want to level up and you're ready to take the next step, then Flanders Scientific is for you. So I know this ended up being a pretty long video, but I really had to take you through all these steps for you to make an educated decision when it comes to purchasing a monitor. It does cost a lot of money, especially for a good monitor. So understanding what you're looking for, what kind of work you do, all that stuff is very important. And guys, if you really want to take your color grading to the next level, then you have to check out the link to the training down below. And if you're enjoying the content, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel for more awesomeness. If you have any suggestions about content, drop it down below. And remember, learn and apply. I will see you guys in the next video.